first up is Dear Evan Hansen, which is based on the Broadway musical of the same name. That Broadway musical came out about four-ish years ago, maybe five at this point. And I had heard good things about the musical, but I did not really know a lot about it. I knew that the role of Evan Hansen had originated with Ben Platt and that people really liked it. And my sort of understanding of it based on just hearing bits and pieces from the cultural zeitgeist was that I thought it was a story about gay teenagers and a coming out story and something along those lines, right? And that's on me, I guess, for not knowing more about it specifically going into the film, but I also didn't want to know anything about it going into the film because if I hadn't seen the musical, I might as well go in with a fresh perspective and just enjoy it for whatever the movie version of it was going to be. Well, enjoying it is not something that happened in any way, shape, or form. I thought this was terrible, and I can only evaluate it from the standpoint of someone who has not seen the musical, so I can't even compare it to how does it do as an adaptation, but just as a film, this is really bad. This was about characters who are just either monsters or in such a level of denial that it's really hard to watch and not in a satisfying, like, oh, I feel so bad, or I just, I go through the emotions for them way, but I just, oh my goodness, I, this was brutal and it's also two hours and 17 minutes which is long and let's remind folks that musicals usually have an intermission so there's a break and a pause in the flow intentionally they're designed around that but when you do an adaptation and you don't build that in and you don't cut the right things from it it's just it's so painful so turns out Dear Evan Hansen, and this isn't spoilers, but Dear Evan Hansen is about a kid in high school, Evan Hansen, who gets sucked into a situation involving, a, a, you know, content warning, but a, another kid's death, and, and it's a story of mourning and grief and all this stuff, but the characters are just, they're all monsters. They're all monsters, is what I took away from it. And Ben Platt is playing Evan Hansen again, which... Uh, is fine, but not fine. Like, Ben Platt at this point is 28 years old. Let's say he was probably, what, 26 when he filmed this. And he just does not look like he could be 18. And some of the other actors do sort of look like it, which makes it even more exacerbated. And the whole thing supposedly about this character is that he's supposed to be awkward and doesn't fit in and has all this anxiety. And I just, I know it's been a talking point. But why? Why the hair? I, I saw photos from the stage musical. They didn't give him... This horrific curly Q wig thing, which might not actually even be a wig is my understanding, but it's just, it looks so fake the entire time that it's distracting, which also just tells you how mediocre the rest of the experience is if you're only focusing on his hair the whole time. But the rest of the cast is rounded out by actual film and, and television people. So it's Caitlin Deaver, Amanda Stenberg, Amy Adams, Julianne Moore, Danny Pino. And I've said this a lot recently, actually, but if you're going to make a movie musical, you need to cast people who can not only act for the screen, which means, you know, being able to be in close-ups, being able to be in the non-singing moments, but ideally it would make sense to cast ones, if you're going to use their singing voices in this, who can also do some singing. And apparently both Caitlin Deaver and Amanda Stenberg are in bands. I don't, you know, anyone can form their own band, but they're not in super well-known bands, but they were okay. Amy Adams we know can sing, but... Julianne Moore and Danny Pino, no, they can't sing, but they have singing parts and they're not huge singing parts. But I think it just serves to demonstrate how indelicately they adapted their own material. And it's a bit confusing because it, it is adapted by the writer of the original book for Dear Evan Hansen. So I it's just, oh. Uh. There are plenty of movies and musicals and things like that where I say, hey, go out of your comfort zone. Like, don't, you know, just because it's a genre you're not usually interested in, like, you know, musicals are not for everyone all the time. This is not the one that I'm going to say, yeah, you should definitely take a chance on this. And then even if you do like musicals and musical films, this is, no, I, I certainly would not recommend this. It's a painful disaster to watch. And yes, again, talking about adaptations a lot, I say, hey, you should take advantage of the medium you're in. You know, you should go to other locations, which they do. But apparently the stage version is pretty constrained. And I think they actually, in showing other locations, sort of accidentally diffused a lot of the dichotomy between the living situations, the two families involved, which is an important contrast in plot point. So I just, they just, I just don't know how they did this to themselves, but they certainly did it to themselves. So also, if you are a fan of the musical, for the love of God, do not see this because I, I think it will utterly ruin your enjoyment of the original musical. And I think it'll be hard to separate it as like, oh, yes, this was the stage version. This is the screen version. It's just not, oh, no, no, there, there was, I found nothing redeeming about this film and the music was not good enough, or at least the music that they kept in was not good enough to justify any of the rest of it. So I'm going to give this one out of five.
And then the other thing I have this week is Foundation on Apple TV+. Plus. It is based on the book and series by Isaac Asimov, which is a critical founding pillar of science fiction as we know it. And I have to admit here once again that I have not actually read it. I think a lot of the commotion around when Apple announced that they were doing the series is that it's going to be very challenging to adapt. There are other books that take place within the universe of Foundation, apparently. And one of those is I, Robot, which I think a lot of people are probably familiar with because that was adapted into a film with one Will Smith. So, you know, Asimov is in pop culture, certainly. As I said, I don't know a ton about the original source material, and so I have to sort of view this as not an adaptation, but I'm approaching it as just, hey, is this science fiction that I enjoy? And so far, the answer is maybe. I think one of my big challenges with a lot of the Apple TV shows is that you can tell a lot of them have really big budgets, but the budgets get spent on some sort of bizarre things. Like there are some scenes which you're like, ah, oh, yes, the production value, for example, impressive in some parts and then in other parts you're like they're just in front of a giant green screen and it's not even a good the, the thing behind them isn't that good it looks like a video game and it sort of takes you out of it but from what I can understand of the first two episodes is that it takes place in a collapsing empire that's ruled by one genetic line and there's clones of an emperor and like at least three of them rule at a time and they're played by Lee Pace, Terrence Mann and Cassian Bilton and then there's a, a mathematician who's challenging the order and structure of the universe they live in and he's played by Jareed Harris who plays Harry Selden, which is a name that will probably mean something to fans of the actual Foundation series and absolutely nothing to those of us who are coming to this fresh. Finally, Lou LaBelle is playing Gal Dornick and Alfred Enoch, who I mostly know as Dean Thomas from Harry Potter, is playing Rach Selden. And it's interesting because Apple usually releases three episodes of a new series to sort of get you into it, but they only did two for this one. And I don't know if I was snagged enough into it. There's a lot of references to math theorems and all these things. And of course, they're fictionalized theorems, or at least I assume they're fictionalized theorems. Uh, who knows? I could be very wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that they are just fictional things and that there's a lot of sort of highfalutin talk about concepts that maybe you should be familiar with, maybe you shouldn't. But I do so far enjoy some of the drama between the idea of these three emperors, you know, three versions of the same emperor at different stages of their life playing off of each other. And the idea that if even if we started all exactly the same from the same DNA, are we all set to fulfill certain destinies that are laid out for us? Like, does genetics matter here? Or are we able to break outside of that and have individualistic thoughts and all these things? And that part to me is interesting, but I am going to give it another episode at least. I don't think it's so inaccessible to someone who's not a fan of sci-fi that you wouldn't want to watch Watch it. But in the same way where I wouldn't be like, hey, if you're not a fan of musicals, Dear Evan Hansen is not the one I would recommend to you as a gateway. I don't think I would say, yes, watch Apple TV Plus's foundation to start. It might change when I see more episodes, but I wouldn't be like, this is your gateway into the world of science fiction. So for now, I'm going to give it a tentative check it out if you were already interested. But if this is something that you were not inherently interested in and you watch the trailer and you're like, man, not for me, I'm not going to try and convince you otherwise.